got some training camp battles on offense coming up here because we are committed to giving you the very best Cowboys training camp coverage out there. If that's something you want, and I suspect that it is, that's why you've clicked. I want all of you, if you haven't already, subscribe to the Cowboys Report right now. Let's begin with a starting job that could maybe be open. That is at left guard. Connor Williams, the incumbent. Many of you desperately trying to replace him. I still don't understand why, but he is the frontrunner to keep that guard. Now he's coming off a or that job. He's coming off a torn ACL. What is significant for me at least is that Williams was not placed on that physically unable to perform list to open up camp. He said he thinks he's going to be good to go for week one. That decision a very promising sign for it. He was better last year. He allowed fewer sacks, wasn't getting beat as often, despite having more snaps, actually. So I saw growth from Connor Williams this past year. Now, I am concerned about those injuries. If they keep adding up, eh, it's going to be a major concern for the Cowboys. But right now, I still think he is the favorite to win that job over the other Connor on the Cowboys offensive line. Connor McGovern, he didn't play at all last year. Had that pectoral injury. The Cowboys liked him coming out of Penn State. They took him in round three because, well, he was just the best player left on their board. Now, his chance at earning a starting job is at least still there. Maybe it's left guard. We'll talk about center here in a second. But I think the limited camp, the no preseason, I do think that works against Connor McGovern. But there is still a chance that he could earn that job, be it left guard or, again, center we'll get to, for the Cowboys. So we'll start with left guard then. Pick one. Who starts at that spot for the Cowboys this year? Is it Connor McGovern? Type CM. Is it Connor Williams? Well, I want you guys to type CW. This will be the pinned comment on today's video. So if you get the ad break here on YouTube, scroll on down and cast your votes. Let's continue on the offensive line. Center is also a spot up for grabs, obviously. Left tackle, right guard, and right tackle are locked and loaded. Joe Looney, Tyler Biotis, you could also maybe see McGovern or Williams, whichever one doesn't win that job, get some play at center. Adam Redman is really more of a backup. In reality, I think the center battle comes down to two players. There's the front runner right now, the veteran. That's Joe Looney, who I'm going to call the, well, the assumed starter, if you will. The Cowboys brought him back, gave him one of those uh, special veteran contracts that allowed him to to get paid more by the Cowboys while counting less against the salary cap and the, and the caps this year. He started at center in the past. We know what he can be. He's a serviceable starter. He's not elite, but he's fine. But he will be pushed by one youngster in particular. That's Tyler Biedish, who I think in an ideal world is so impressive in camp that the Cowboys go, wow, we have to make this guy the starter. We like Joe Looney. But this youngster is so much better. He's cheaper. He's going to be here long term. That's the ideal scenario for the Cowboys. However, and I'll make this point now. I'm not going to bring it up because I don't want to repeat myself over and over again. The lack of a preseason, a limited training camp, it most certainly works against these rookies. It does not help Beatish. He's not going to have the same time. He's not going to have the same chances to show out. So because of that, I actually think Joe Looney is still the favorite to start at center. But get your votes in. I, of course, want to hear from you guys. Who starts at that center position? Is it Joe Looney? Well, type in JL. Is it Tyler Biotis? Type in TB. Or is it Connor McGovern, who I'll bring over from our left guard discussion? You can type in CM. The fullback spot is also now open, thanks to Jameez Olawali opting out for the 2020 season. Now, his biggest impact last year was on special teams. However, Mike McCarthy historically has used a fullback significantly more than what we saw the Jason Garrett-led offense do. The only current fullback on the roster is Shewo Olanalua, who was actually a running back at TCU. I also think he has some really great special teams value. So in terms of slotting somebody in to simply replace Olawali in the almost identical role he played last year for the Cowboys, I think Alanalua fits that very, very well. And you can look at where things stand on the running back, fullback depth chart. Tell you, it's not going to be Darius Anderson. It's not going to be Rico Dowdle. Alanalua is the only one who fits that running back, fullback mold. However, 
Mike McCarthy has said that he views the fullback tight end position as actually pretty similar in terms of like the, the strategic bucket or however, whatever way you want to phrase it there. The schematic menu was the exact phrase used by Mike McCarthy. So you could see a tight end kind of fill that role. The one who makes the most sense is Charlie T. We'll call him Charlie T because that name is a mouthful. If you want to pronounce it, it's Charlie Tumapea. But Charlie T has the build of that fullback. He's not 6'5 or 6'6 like some of these other options the Cowboys have. But he was also more of a big slot in college. So it would be a very different role for him than what he's played historically. Look, Jarwin, of course, is tight end one. But Dalton Schultz and Blake Bell can be decent blockers. They're just bigger than what you normally see in a fullback. Sean McEwen, same role. Cole Hickettini, eh, not sure he's all that great. So I am looking at those two undrafted free agents, Charlie T, Shewo Olanalua. They have the mold. They fit the size. But the blocking, quite simply, I think is the biggest concern for both of, two, of those two guys, which is a concern at the fullback position. Now, if you're going to be allowed to go to a Cowboys game, we don't yet know for certain you will have to wear a mask. Good thing at our friends over at FNAX have put out a whole bunch of new ones. Chatsports.com slash Cowboys mask will take you right to it. You're going to see a ton of options. They've got individual ones. They've got the, the uh, neck masks as well. They've got four packs. They've got player theme masks. All kinds of variety. You can check out everything at Chatsports.com slash Cowboys mask. That link, by the way, it'll be in the description and it'll be in the comments. Let's go to receiver now. Obviously, your big three is locked and loaded. Cooper, Gallup, and Lamb. But spots four, five, and maybe spot number six are actually all up for grabs right now. And it's been thinned out as of late thanks to some opt-outs and some cuts. But there are some players who have well, played for the Cowboys in the past. Four veterans have at least got reps on the field for Dallas. Cedric Wilson, Devin Smith, Noah Brown, Ventel Bryant. Bryant, special teams guy. Noah Brown, who well, actually kind of fits that H-back tight end receiver hybrid role as well. Devin Smith brings you speed. Cedric Wilson offers some inside outside. And I think some flexibility when it comes to returns. I think Wilson makes the roster. So that's four. But what about John Vay Johnson? We mentioned the veterans. He didn't play for the Cowboys last year. He was placed on IR. He, by the way, has just been activated from the COVID-19 list. He offers the speed that other players don't really bring. Maybe it could be a battle between Johnson and Smith, fitting in that vertical-type deep threat option. There is, however, one UDFA left on the roster right now. Kendrick Rogers was released. Stephen Gidry opted out. It leaves only Aaron Parker. He is now the favorite if you want a UDFA at receiver to make the roster or the practice squad in some capacity. I am not sure if that happens. We'll wait and see. I wonder if the Cowboys will instead choose to go with a veteran option, which is why I think that, although he's not the most experienced, I actually think Cedric Wilson is the favorite to be the Cowboys' number four receiver. He can play inside. He can play out. But I do, of course, want to hear from you guys. Who do you think should be the Cowboys' number four wide receiver. Is it someone on the roster, a Wilson, a Smith, a John Vay Johnson? And although I'm probably going to regret this, I will allow write-in votes. So if you want to go sign a Tavon Austin or a Des Bryant, well, you can type that in the comments as well. All right, some more depth discussion here. The backup offensive tackle, Cam Fleming, he might be starting for New York. That leaves Brandon Knight and Cam Irving. Now, these are their statistics from last year. Of course, Irving played more. He was bad for Kansas City. The way the Cowboys paid him, though, he's going to make this roster. The question is, can Brandon Knight, who I was pleasantly surprised by in a limited capacity last year, can he beat out Irving? I'm not sure. I don't think Mitch Hyatt, Terrence, still have any real chance of being an actual swing tackle this year. They're probably fighting for a practice squad spot. So it probably comes down to Irving or Knight. I would honestly prefer Brandon Knight. I, I, I did not like what I saw from Cam Irving last year. If he gets on the field, I'm going to have some significant borderline Chaz Green, Byron Bell type concerns for the offensive line. But I want you guys to vote too. Pick your swing tackle. Type E for Cam Irving, or you can type K for Brandon Knight. Let me know what you guys think down there in the comments section. 
Finally, the, uh, I guess, quarterback three battle. I think it's going to be Ben DiNucci. The, he was the one drafted. They have Clayton Thorson on the roster as well. But even though this is a potential quarterback three battle, it might not be for an actual roster spot. There is no preseason, guys. That means the quarterback that the NFL thought maybe shouldn't have even been drafted because he went late in round seven, well, they're not going to have anything new to change their minds. So if I'm the Cowboys, I'm going, you know what? I bet we can get Ben DiNucci onto the practice squad. Now, maybe he's so impressive in the limited camp reps that he gets that the Cowboys go, ah, it's fine. We'll just keep him on the roster, have that third quarterback to be safe. But I think there's a pretty good chance the Cowboys go, no one's going to claim him. No one drafted him before we, we took him late in round seven. Let's put him on the practice squad. But I would be surprised if Thorson beat out DiNucci for that quarterback three role. Hey Cowboys fans, thanks for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, click right here to subscribe to our channel for all the best Cowboys coverage on the internet. That's news, rumors, highlights, mailbags, film studies, and a whole lot more. And I'm making your lives a little bit easier as well with the next Cowboys Report video right here.